Hello and welcome to this video. It's just going to be a quick video going through the Sinti Dark Fantasy Pack. This pack looks really cool and I thought, you know, for Halloween, happy Halloween by the way everyone, uh, I thought it'd be good to just do a bit of a walkthrough. Now I've got the project open here in Unreal Engine 5.2. Uh, this is just straight out of the box, I've not done any tweaks. Just as a comparison, I've also got it open in Unity 2020.2 20, 20 out of the box. This is the built-in render pipeline this is using. I did open it in the HDRP just to try and get a bit more parity between Unity and Unreal. But obviously Unreal just looks amazing straight out of the box. This is using built-in. Also the performance is really bad. I think that's the editor, not the pack. Because you can see that I've got both editors open and it's running like really well inside Unity. So it's definitely not the asset, I think that's a Unity issue. Um, but you can just see it looks, it doesn't look nice just straight out of the box within Unity. That's not Cinti's fault, I think that's just, there's, you know, we need to add post-processing, so we need to get the post-processing plugin uh, using built-in. You can't just add a um, volume, as far as I'm aware, effects. Uh, no, so we'd have to get the post-processing stack, I believe, which is an, uh, a package in the package manager. Uh, and then we could add stuff like bloom, um, contrast, and kind of tweak it to match a bit better. Just a bit of a side-by-side -side with Unity and Unreal Engine. Um, again, this is just out of the box. I've imported it into a new built-in project with Unity. And with Unreal Engine, it comes as a project. I've just swapped the version to Unreal Engine 5.2. It's on 4 by default, um, but the process was very, uh, very easy. To do that, all you have to do once you've downloaded these assets is you've got the U project file here. You can go to Show More Options, switch Unreal Engine version, and then from the list, you can uh, choose from the installed versions of the engine that you have. So I chose 5.2 and I've upgraded it. Um, open the project, let the shaders compile, and this is what it looks like. So with that preamble out of the way, I'm gonna continue here in Unreal Engine, and we're just gonna have a bit of a wander around the uh, asset. So let's get a big, nice overview. So there's a few different scenes. So this is the castle scene, or the cathedral scene. We've also got a crypt and a graveyard scene, as well as a scene with just the characters in their T-poses, just so you can see the characters. And we'll go through uh, all of the different demo scenes um, that we can see here. So this is the cathedral scene. As you can see, it's quite, uh, it's not large in terms of, you know, on the X and Y axis, I believe it is in Unreal Engine, but it's quite tall. Um, so, you know, we start down here and it's very densely uh, decorated. And obviously, all of the, this is just a demo scene. All of these assets are individual um, assets, which you can then use to build out your own scene. So this could just be as big as you want it to be. Um, so I'm going to start down here with the creepy, creepy notice board. And we've got this uh, fire going with this demon dude. We've got a nice, I was going to say a nice gallows. Can gallows be described as nice? Uh, but yeah, we've got the gallows there, some lampposts, the banners, um, this cool skull with some tags hanging off it. Lots of different gravestone assets, which again, we can see put to use in a different way in the graveyard um, scene. We've got the sarcophagus over here, um, and these little mini crypts, which we have, there's the stone uh, variations. This one's locked. Is there anything behind this? Let's have a look. Oh, there is. So we've got a little Sinti uh, angel there, buried away. Uh, what I quite like about this pack is it seems really cool to be able to make some sort of like souls-like out of. Um, I'm assuming that's the kind of gothic dark vibe that they've gone for when building this. Um, but yeah, as with all Sinti demo scenes, it's just really well uh, organized and put together like it looks really cool they are very good level designers over at the Sinti uh, studios so let's go into the cathedral now we've got this big grand archway can we slow down our camera and get this nice dramatic ooh I think that's as slow as I can get it um, we're going into the 
spooky portal. Got the organ at the back. You can see we've got the stained glass windows, which we can actually see out of, which I quite like. The walkways, people being hung. And a staircase, where does this go? Oh, cool. She got lists of cool, like, potion assets, there's individual books, the scrolls, scroll piles. A nice outdoor area. So like every kind of inch is detailed, uh, which I really like. You know, you could have this as some sort of, you could use this cathedral as like a city builder type asset from, you know, looking at it from the top down. You could do a first person type of game, third person, like I said, Souls-like action adventure type game. Um, there's just a lot of really cool uh, assets packed into this one scene for you to dig through. And obviously you get all of the VFX as well. So we've got these kind of cool volcanic embers just drifting around, which adds like this really nice atmosphere to the scene. And we've got these na this nice broken bridge kind of asset, which you could have off in the background. So this is a nice little overview of the cathedral scene. Okay, let's jump over into, uh, we'll leave the characters to last. Let's jump over to the crypt scene so you can see this. Uh, let's turn off those gizmos and uh, I guess let's start over here. So this is a bit of a smaller scene and you can see this is the full kind of level layout. But because everything's so modular and you can kind of kit bash, you could just, you know, you could make this crypt as big as you wanted with multiple doorways. Um, so we can come through here into the main crypt. We've got these nice light shafts coming down onto the altar or the chest. And again, it's a lot of the same assets from the cathedral scene, but there's just something different that you can do with them, organize them in a completely different way. And do this nice interior kind of graveyard scene. Well, not graveyard, crypt scene. Is there anything in the chest? Let's have a look. Cue the Zelda music. Da -da 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 there is nothing inside the chest, but you could do. Go to the models, uh, props. Dead animal. Don't want a dead animal in there. We could put a magic book inside there. There we go. And we'll just close that back up. You've got the sarcophagus as well. Which could have all sorts of creepy, nasty things in there. That when you open it, they come crawling out. And obviously you've got some cool, like, magic symbol looking things. So yeah, that's a lot of it. That's a smaller scene, but it's a cool scene nonetheless. Okay, let's have a look at the graveyard scene. So again, this is using a lot of the same assets, but just in a different way. This one's just more of a. This is less gothic, I'd say, and just more kind of general Halloween spooky vibes. Um, but again. Everything's kind of modular. You can do a lot with these assets. Um, oh, there's even a, a nice little dock area. It's a fully, fully contained little island. Oh, and that water looks very nice. I like the uh, the water shader on that. Let's just have a look at that scene in Unity. I'm quite curious what the um, what the water shader looks like in Unity just by default it looks awful by comparison <laughs> I 
Again, a bit of post-processing and some tweaks to the kind of built-in render pipeline. Um, you could probably get close to feature parry, but I mean, you know, it's not a fair comparison either. Unreal Engine 5 is, you know, technologically leaps and bounds ahead of Unity. Um, especially when we're not using HDRP, so it's not a fair comparison. I'm not trying to say it is. Um, obviously, this is a lot more performant, uh, such a small scene. But yeah, that's just a bit of a comparison between the two with that water shader. And finally, let's have a look at the characters. Um, so we won't save that. So this is the kind of full characters that come in the pack. As with most Cinti assets, the characters will be uh, modular. So you've got uh, attachments, so there's like tail attachments, uh, the different hair attachments, capes, for example. But these are just the pre-made pre ones um, for you to get a look at. So we've got, uh, actually, let's light them They're lit from behind. Let's light them from kind of the side. So you've got some cool fantasy assets. I like this guy, the main villain. Really like his armor. Very coolly detailed. You got the skeletons. That weird stilt walker. <laughs> different types of hunters and demons as well. So you got the stone demon. Now, obviously, what's really good about all the Cinti assets is because there's so many of them, if you go over to the Cinti store, uh, where they've got all of their latest assets, you've got the Polygon uh, Dark Fantasy pack here. It also shows you which packs you can mash it together with. So you've got, like, the Legendary Chest bundle, Fantasy Characters. So all of these characters would fit right in inside, you know, this this world alongside these guys um, and a new feature that they've recently added to the Cinti store is their new search function so if you wanted um, like potion bottles you could look where you could look for assets that contain sort of potions so we've got a dungeon pack here which will obviously have a large range of potion bottles so we can see them there uh, their new search function while it seems quite trivial uh, it's really good it kind of digs into all of their different packs and again even this one the dungeon pack would fit right in with those uh, with this dark fantasy pack so yeah there you have it there's a lot of fun to be had with these uh, asset packs uh, really get the juices flowing leaves you to just be able to program and kind of you know get to work designing levels uh, it's really helped me in do these little game jam projects obviously I'm a big fan of them Obviously, I'm a massive fan of them. If you want to support the channel and you do want to pick up any of the Cinti packs shown, there will be an affiliate link in the description and the pinned top comment. Uh, that doesn't add any cost to you, but I do get a little kickback if you purchase from them, and it allows me to keep doing what I love, which is making videos for you guys here on YouTube. But in the meantime, I will say thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.